Tisha here, Vinyl Window Pro. We got a, this video is about an egress window for uh, the means of fire escape from the bedroom to the outside of the house. Um, somewhere along this wall, where we're gonna put it, on the opposite side, inside the home, there is a bedroom. There's not a window there right now, currently, so. Somewhere here, we're gonna be cutting and installing a uh, big sliding window, four feet by 34 inches high, which will give you 3.8 square feet of unobstructed opening to get out. Um, we're gonna be tracing it in from inside out. The customer wants to have a very particular location for where it needs to sit. So before we start cutting and digging, we're gonna go ahead and drill a pilot hole. Then those interior measurements, we can take to the outside, see exactly where it needs to be. Dig it, cut it, and install it. Let's take a peek inside the house now. Okay, we're inside the room right now. Somewhere here where that window will be. Actually, specifically, we're gonna go from this stud that way. So to make sure that the window is gonna line up exactly here and not somewhere else, especially underneath the, uh, the, the big supporting uh, beam here, we just need to drill the hole and make sure that it's gonna be here. We're gonna stay back from the ceiling, probably about six, eight inches, just to uh, be able to uh, put a header here and give a good support for the, uh, for the ceiling. You never wanna butt up to it. Um, also, we'll make the window ledge a little bit lower you don't want it to be too high, kind of defines the point of you climbing up and escaping. Uh, you don't want it to be more than five feet from the ground up. So basically uh, the four foot wide window is gonna go here and 34 inches height is gonna be right about here. Okay, so it's gonna have a nice, nice opening to bring a lot of light to this space. It's gonna make it feel like it's not even below grade. It's gonna feel like it's a regular bedroom upstairs, which you're gonna see in a little bit here. Yeah, the exposure is killing me on this one. Boom, and it's done. We go a little bit bigger than the actual window so we can install the uh, pressure treated box. Okay, we uh, cock them and uh, fasten them right to the uh, rough opening of the of the concrete. So there's going to be additional layer of caulking going all around here. Grip edge is already pre-installed. We're gonna seal them with this uh, amazing membrane. This is made by uh, 3M. This is 3015 uh, membrane product. Really good, really stretchy. Uh, basically, it's going to be applied all the way along the bottom sill to prevent the condensation that might be dripping down so it can actually escape to the outside and not damage any of this stuff. The rest of it, we don't have to worry about it. And uh, it actually is already pressure treated wood to begin with, which is rot resistant, rated for below grade applications. Uh, so once this stuff gets peeled on like so, uh, you always wanna come up a little bit on the jam sides and uh, make the corners real nice and tight. This is typically the, uh, the painful area for most of the window guys. They never really have a perfect seal right in this area here. I'm going to show you in a second with another piece how that's going to be completed. The uh, 3M product is so easy to work with because it is so flexible and stretchy. You're not required to cut any of the uh, what uh, what they call in the industry butterflies to seal, to seal the joints around here. So all we're going to do is just wrap it like so around the drip edge on the bottom. We're gonna cut it a little bit, and just so you can see it, I'm gonna cut it not on the corner, but I'm actually gonna go up about an inch so that this corner is nice and smooth and sealed. And this product literally stretches right over top, just like that, to make sure that there's no, no uh, possibility for moisture to get in. 
to uh, help protect it further, all you gotta do is just cut another piece. We'll return it a little bit higher. And we're gonna overlap this onto the 3M we just put up. And we're gonna make a cut in the opposite direction to make sure that uh, none of the cuts are uh, matching to each other. That way it'll give you that really nice tight seal so you can literally take a hose and run water down in this corner. It's never going to come through the inside of your opening. And that is very, very important. Saves people a lot of service calls down the road and creates amazing credibility for the company. Because once we do the job, we don't actually have to come back and service it if it's done correctly. So the corner is now perfectly sealed. There is not a single cup anywhere near to it, and they are two inches apart, stretched out, filled in, beautiful, nice. We'll carry on with the rest of it, put the window in, form it, continue the shoot after that. Okay. Cool. Okay, so the window is all installed, fastened into the new buck that we put up. Uh, the jam extension is already on the inside, we're going to show you that in a minute. Uh, foam almost completed. So I'm just going to do the last bead here and then we can put the uh, aluminum capping over top, seal that so all of this stuff is not going to be left exposed like uh, a lot of guys like to do out there, still don't know why. So we got the drip edge up top, it's going to be sealed here as well, it's already sealed underneath on the inside also. So any water that's coming down here is actually going to come out, not into the window, but it's going to come out leak outside. The uh, the product we use for uh, spray foam is uh, Hilti, as you can see, amazing, all weather extreme foam product, works in uh, really cold temperatures, up to minus 15 I believe it is, expands beautiful. The key here with the foam is uh, you don't want to put too much, you don't want to put too little. The minute you put too much foam, it actually has enough strength to pop the window and smash the glass. Uh, that's how much it can actually expand inside So whenever you apply that you want to be just enough to seal the gaps in a nice even bead and just Not too much to make it expand so much that this glass is going to crack and shatter uh, It'll take a couple hours for it to kind of solidify and cure in about 20 minutes We can actually go ahead and do the trims so it's not going to be tacky anymore Okay, and whatever the excess is sticking out, while it's still a little bit soft, we can either push it back in with a finger or just cut it off with a knife. Nothing's going to happen to it. Okay. Okay, the window's in. 48 by 34 to pass for fire escape. That was the original idea. It's an egress window. When you slide it open, this is the hole that the code says needs to be 3.8 square feet or bigger in order to call it a legal egress fire escape um, opening for somebody to get out from the bedroom. Um, comes with a screen, obviously. One nice thing about our product is it doesn't lift out like any other window, so it's really difficult to break into it once it actually is closed and locked. This window, you can open it right inside the house, easy to clean it, and then you can close it back in. Really nice, nice, uh, cool feature that a lot of companies uh, still do not have. Jam extension, three quarter inch plywood, nice and strong. You can sit on it, you can paint it. Uh, by the time whoever is going to do the drywall here, case it, it's going to look mwah, beautiful. Okay. Finished product on the outside. So you got your window, you got your well, three inches away from foundation and uh, back filled with gravel. Uh, a lot of this dirt here is gonna sink a little bit as soon as precipitation starts to occur and um, it can be uh, finished up with grass or something afterwards. Uh, something we don't do, but a uh, landscaper can do that for you. But that's basically what you get for a fire escapable egress window in the basement.